be uh, conducting the Zawi Estimation uh, Coaches Workshop at this time for 2023. And we're going to try to take you through as if your students were coming into the competition room and going through station one, two, and three and discussing what needs to be done in each location to help you know how to practice better with them. Uh, students walk into the room, usually in a pair. Sometimes you have a student who's by themselves and they're going to line up behind a bucket. We have like 12 of them in the room. In the bucket will be a dry substance of some kind, 100 grams what looking for. Uh, and it's the cup that they're going to be putting it in. It could be a 10 ounce cup, 12 ounce cup, 16 ounce cup. Usually it's a plastic solo cup of some kind, up to 24 ounces. And the bigger the cup, of course, the harder it is to gauge exactly what you have to put in there because the cup weighs about 24 grams itself, which is not part of the 100 grams. So after they've given us their cup back, after we decided they can now stand over the top of the, the bucket and put in uh, some whatever is in there, paper clips, spaghetti, usually it's pasta of some kind or rice or beans of some kind. Uh, once in a while, it's nuts and bolts, which is more difficult because they're heavy and you don't need that many of them in the, the cup to be able to get the 100 grams. So practice uh, some heavy objects as well occasionally, like quarters, things like that. Um, once the students have given us their cup at station one, they cannot get it back. We'll talk about why that's important because they can go to station two or three after station one, whichever is less crowded, and uh, they can do it, go back and forth from station two to three as much as they want during that 30 minutes. They have a whole total of 30 minutes. They usually are at station one for about two to five minutes. And then after that, they can stay longer, but then they're throwing themselves on time for station two and three, which have a lot more to do there. Uh, station two, they're going to uh, find a spot that has three containers with objects in them, one in the small to medium range, one in the medium to medium large range, and then one with uh, quite a bit. We have the parameters of 100 to 20,000 uh, now. And this is our third year for that. And so it can be rice. It could be in a you know, cup that's opaque and it can be seen at the top. And of course, the important thing here about the way to solve the problem of how many objects are in the container is to count the surface, one layer of the surface, think how many layers you think you see, and multiply. It's not, there's no formula for station two. There's no, if I have it in a cylinder, you don't think, oh, I've got to teach my kids the volume of a cylinder. No, you don't. All you have to do is be able to count the surface again, one layer, how many layers do you see, and multiply. It's that simple. Uh, if it's uh, large, object, large uh, things, uh, uh, this is the bucket, by the way, that we use. It's a pretty regular standard bucket that you find it in wires or anywhere else. Station one. Station two has containers like this one. It's uh, just a plastic. It has pasta in this one. This one's like twisted pasta. And the students have to count the surface. How many they count on the top layer and then how many layers they think they see along the edge and multiply. There are three of those. Again, usually there's one in the smaller, to like 100 to 500 range or 700, and there's another one in the 1,000 to four or 5,000 range, and then one more somewhere between 11,000 and 20,000. So I keep in practice that. Now, a quick uh, uh, little tip for coaches trying to set this up. You don't have to count all the objects in the container. For example, if I have doing rice, I count out, and it does, you have to count a little bit, 100 grains of rice three different times, and weigh that on my scale, and I might get whatever that is, 4.25 grams. And then I do that again, I get 4.29, and another time I get 4.33. Add those together, divide by three, you get a average number of grams for 100 grains of rice. Now you pour a bunch of rice into a container and weigh it on the scale minus the, the weight of the container and divide by that number you had, and it gives you a number of how many uh, pieces of rice are in that container. And it might be 16,500 or 16,550 or whatever it might be. You don't have to count out 16,550 though. You have to just count out 100 three times. And then, as I just mentioned, with that little division problem, you get the number in there. That's a lot easier than trying to count out all those numbers. And so that's a good, good tip for practicing. Um, the container that can be used is usually see-through on all sides. Uh, can be uh, one, maybe two sides or not, but you, all you need is to do is be able to have the top visible and then one side. And that is, you can practice that by hiding a couple sides occasionally just so you've covered that in case not all the sides are available for viewing in a container on station two. Uh, station three, and I'll take questions at the end, of course, don't worry if you have any questions. Station three is going to have containers that you need to follow. You find the volume in cubic centimeters. Okay, We have a box, a Kleenex here. This is pretty close to the top range. 
uh, of uh, 4,000 cubic centimeters. And this is closer to a couple hundred on this little crayon box. And you can do anything from a crayon box, pencil box, staple box, a tape box, uh, smaller Kleenex boxes than the one you saw here. It could be all kinds of different Kleenex boxes that are out there. And those are good ones to use to be able to practice. Uh, toothpaste boxes, box, this box, box that a bar of soap comes in. All those things are good for practicing. Now, what you want to want to do on station three is to get your kids to have some uh, three different parameters or four different uh, possibilities. They're going to have on their hands naturally occurring wrinkles on their hands and fingers, and you don't want to put any you know, demarcations on there, no pencil marks or ma magic marker marks to demark exactly three centimeters on their finger or something. But you want to find something like the tip of their finger or the, 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 from the tip of the finger to the first wrinkle is whatever that might be, two centimeters. You want to have a one or a two, a five, six, or seven, and then something like a 12 to 15, maybe the palm of their hand from the tip of the little finger to the tip of the thumb would be a good one. And that would be one that we, so when you have something like this box of Kleenex, you're not taking, they're not taking their finger and going two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 12. That's too many measurements for one line of this box. They're going to be off each time a little bit. And that adds up to a lot when you get to the end. So in other words, in this situation here, they would use their palm of their hand. And then they would get almost the whole box, and then they have a little bit left over, which they'd use their finger and do you know, two two more measurements. So three measurements across this line here would be good. And then you have to teach them, of course, not to repeat. Don't we do this side, then that one, and then come back across the top again, because that would be the same. That's not what you want. You want the length times width times height, not two of the same, unless it's a cube, of course, and it doesn't matter. Okay, let's see what else. Um, Practicing this uh, event is, of course, the most important thing because the more you practice it, the better they get at it. And to pass competitions, to be in the top five or so, you've got to be close to 90% on each of your calculations. So they are estimating the, how many grams there are. They're getting close to 90 or 110 because if you're over or under by 10, you get the same score. That's a 90%. If you're 110 grams, then that's a score of 90. And 90, of course, is a score of 90. In the uh, area of the, the containers, they have they're guessing the number. If their number is just the number they have, divided by the number, the actual actual number, and you get a percentage for that. You divide by 100, you get a score. If it's 90% or better, you're, you're doing great. Same thing with the boxes. You're going to try to get try to get them close to 90% accuracy eventually. It may not happen right away. You also may find that one student, if you have, usually you have two students in this activity, and so if you have one student who's really really good at weighing out the 100 grams, and the other one not so good, you may want to assign that the 100 grams portion is just to one student. And the other one will have to understand that they're going to share the other two stations. And they will, you know, he can advise on the station one, but maybe not be the final say on station one. And the same thing might happen. Maybe the other student is better at station two or station three in calculating uh, with the calculator, which, of course, the pencils and calculators are provided to the students. When they come in, do not, and the students do not bring anything with them. And the back of the answer sheet is used for scratch for figuring things out for calculations, for writing things down. Pencils and calculators are provided. They would not have to bring anything into the room except their knowledge. Okay, anything else? Let's see here. It's a TI-108 calculator, in case anybody's trying to get the same calculator we're using at the competition. And I think that's about it. I'll be open for questions. You can always unmute and then answer your question, ask your question. Hello, uh, my name is Mark Carter. I had a quick question on the uh, first uh, exercise. Okay. Um, are the students able to guesstimate the weight in anything other than the cup, like a plastic bag, like we were doing some coaching and trying to train on what is just the 100 grams and by doing that in like a snack sandwich bag? Mm -hmm. Is it going to have to be the cup that they gauge that 100 grams in? Yes, it will have to be the cup, right? And you can't bring a plastic bag in with you uh, and then put it in there and say, oh, this is exactly 100 grams and then pour it in the cup. That's not, not possible, no. There's no props okay. coming into the competition, just their knowledge. Unfortunately, no pencils, no calculators, no other objects, even no, no rulers, <laughs> no plastic bags as well. But yeah, that would be a pretty good idea. That's something that you said that's used for, for practicing. I've often given the students 100 grams of pennies in a plastic bag and had them just carry it around their pocket. And so every once in a while, they have a free moment, pick it up and say, that's 100 grams of pennies or pepper clips or whatever. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people 
you know, whatever they can and have them have that for, between the time you practice with them to the next time you practice with them, have them have two plastic bags of whatever. And so they can just at home say, okay, this is 100 grams of lima beans, this is 100 grams of lentils, 100 grams of paper clips. Uh, and then so the next time you switch that out and have them take home with them uh, something else that's 100 grams in a plastic bag. But of course, that's helpful for practicing, but you can't use a plastic bag in the competition. But that's a good question. Okay, so it'd be it'd be useful to practice with several different types of cups. Yes, absolutely. In fact, one that would be like a hard plastic cup. I did that one year. That threw everybody off pretty big. It was a, maybe the cup weighed 55 grams. It was not a plastic solo cup, which weighed you know 10, 12, 14, 24 grams. It was a heavy plastic cup. It was a little. Okay. Cup. It was like like you're equivalent of like three plastic cups basically. So that was that's unusual, and that's hard to do for me because it takes up a lot more room <laughs> to bring in a uh, hundred or eighty uh, cups that are uh, heavy and plastic and, and can't be can't be uh, stacked together. More okay, thank you. We can practice that once in a while. A heavy cup. That's much more difficult to, to, to isolate the hundred grams. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we have a question in the chat from Christina. In station one, what do they scoop with? Can they use their hands to fill the cup or do they need to use their cups only? Uh, they can use their hands or the cup. Either one is fine. Uh, uh, we all try, try to have them have the cup over the top of the, the bucket so that whatever we have in there, rice or pasta or whatever, it doesn't fly all over the, the table and the floor. And that does happen occasionally as they're getting a little animated. But uh, so we try to say, keep the cup over the top. They can dig the cup into it and then pull it up and then see what they've got and then dip dump some out or pick some out with their hands and get there without the touch with their hands. That's a good question about touching things. Let's, let's cover that real quick since that came up. Station one, of course, I just mentioned you can touch you have the cup. You can put your hands into the cup. You can use just, just the hands inside the, the bucket and put stuff into the cup. Vice versa, you can pour stuff out or pick stuff out. When you get to station two, those containers often have a uh, cellophane or a plastic wrap over the top with a rubber band. And so you can't pick up the containers. This one is okay because it's sealed pretty well. But if we have them with a rubber band and just uh, some cellophane over the top, it's going to be not able to be picked up and turned upside down. They can manipulate them on the table. They can turn them around and uh, put their head, head down at the table level. On station three, the boxes, of course, can be picked up and manipulated as much as they want because there's no problem with them falling out of them. So uh, practice uh, not being able to pick up the containers on two just be able to manipulate them on the table and turning them around. What kind of scale they use? Is it a digital scale or is it just a regular? I use a digital scale that goes to tens of grams. You can find those digital scales on Amazon or anywhere and they're not that expensive. And they will get, they will be like up to a kilo. But we're not going to have probably going to you're only measuring if students are off by more than uh, any. And of course, if they have more than 200 grams or they have more than twice the actual number, the score will be zero for that portion that you know one of those containers or one of those boxes. So you want to make sure your kids are getting nowhere near double. We had that happen a lot with the nuts and bolts that I had one year. Students were having 24 ounce cup and the students were filling up. The, they, they figured that I had to fill the cup up at least halfway, right? Uh, some of that didn't practice, and so they had you know, 550 grams of nuts and bolts in there, five times the amount they needed. So of course, for that, for that score and that particular portion of the competition was a zero because it was more than 100, more than 200 grams. Anything 200 grams or more would be a score of zero on station one. Same thing with station two and three. If the actual, if it's 1,500 and they've got more than 3,000, they've got more than double the actual number, then they're going to have a score of zero. Another question in chat: Are the estimating just the, are are they estimating just the contents or the contents and the container? We're referring to station two. On station two, they're estimating the number of objects in the container. So the container is just one container for each of the three possibilities there: small, medium, and large, you know, approximately. And so there's going to be uh, no containers to count; just one of each of the three: small, medium, and large. And they're going to be counting the objects in each container. Uh, I'm guessing that she's asking about the uh, measuring the weight. Um, um, it's not not a factor in station two or three. Weight is only a factor in station one. Objects in station two and cubic volume 
PlayStation 2. Uh, another question, will the units of measure stay, stay the same? Units of measure are always going to be uh, objects in the, uh, uh, this is going to be grams in the, uh, in the uh, bucket. The bucket will be grams of whatever is in there. And of course, this is uh, just a number. There's no no metric or otherwise or English version for how many objects there are in a container. And then, of course, it's metric for the boxes. It's going to be cubic centimeters times times height. Uh, another question. This is your chance for questions. Put them out there if you need to have some questions. Also, if you decide that you have a question after this uh, uh, situation is over with here, you can always go on the website and do it frequently asked the FAQs. There's a place there for you to be able to ask a question and it comes to me eventually. And I also answer and it gets back on the website as well. I just Another saw- question. Sorry, uh, just to clarify, the cup's weight is counted in the 100 grams, or are we looking for only 100 grams of the object? Only 100 grams of the object. The cup is, you have to kind of like tear it off, so to speak, or not, not count that. So if the, cu the, cup, the cup, the cup, the more difficult it is to isolate the 100 grams of what's inside the cup itself. Yeah, so if you have, a, have rice in the buckets, they want 100 grams of rice in the cup, whatever size the cup might be. If it's an 8-ounce cup or a 28-ounce cup, it's 100 grams of rice in the cup. They won't know what the, the, the grams of the cup is. They have to kind of estimate that in their head as well. So if they see, they think the cup weighs about 20, they want to put, they want to be able to feel 120 in their hand. But they're actually trying to figure out what's in the cup. The cup has to have 100 grams of whatever is in the bucket. Any more questions? Okay, once again, if you have a question, please go to the website for Macomb Science Olympiad and you can go to frequently asked questions and ask that question there if you need to. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.